Hello, Kearney Raiders. This is your principal, Ms. Hubley, and I wanted to read a story to you. I thought it might be nice during this time of school closure to hear a story. This is The Mysterious Giant of Barletta. It's an Italian folktale adapted and illustrated by Tommy De Paola. And I chose this one because it comes from Italy and our friends in Italy right now are suffering with the pandemic. And so I wanted to send this out to our friends in Italy. Storyteller's Note. In the southern part of Italy on the Adriatic Sea is the town of Barletta. This Adriatic town is quiet. It is not visited by many tourists, but there is something special in Barletta, standing right there in front of San Sepulcro Church. The something special is a gigantic statue of a young man. Some say it's the largest statue in all of Europe. No one knows exactly how it got there or exactly who it is supposed to be. One thing is sure, the people of Barletta love their mysterious giant. They tell stories about him. One of their favorite stories about the mysterious giant is how in the 11th century, the giant statue saved the town of Barletta. This is that story. The Mysterious Giant of Barletta, an Italian folktale adapted and illustrated by Tommy De Paola. In the town of Barletta, in front of the Church of San Sepulcro, stood a huge statue. No one knew where it had come from or when. The Mysterious Giant, for that is what the people called the statue, had always been there as long as anyone could remember. Even Zia Conchetta. Zia Conchetta was the oldest one in all of Barletta. She lived right across the square from the giant statue. Every day, every night, for my whole lifetime, I've looked out the window and there he is, she would say. Good weather and bad, the mysterious giant stood there. The people of Barletta loved having the statue in their town. In the early morning, right before the sun came up, the sisters from the convent and other townspeople came to the church for Holy Mass. They always greeted the giant with a nod or a smile. The people on the way to market always hailed the giant and asked that he give them good luck to sell all their goods or to get a good bargain. All day long, the children played around his legs and the doves flew around his head. The young boys would sit on his big feet and tell jokes. A little later, the older boys would sit on the giant's feet to watch the older girls walk by. And at night, lovers would steal kisses in the giant's shadow. Then the streets would be empty. Doves would settle on the giant's head and shoulders and arms and coo themselves to sleep. And Zia Conchetta would open her window and call, Buena notte, Colosso! Good night, big one. This was the time the giant loved best. All was calm, all was still. Ah, what a peaceful life, the mysterious giant thought. But one day, this peaceful life was over. Word had reached the town that an army of a thousand men was destroying all the towns and cities along the lower Adriatic coast and this army was heading straight for Barletta. The townspeople ran through the streets in panic. No one in Barletta was ready for an army coming to destroy them. They had no generals, no captains. Why, they didn't even have soldiers. Shouts and screams echoed off the buildings. The night was lit by torches. All the peace and quiet was gone. No doves came to settle on the mysterious giant's shoulders, and Zia Conchetta didn't call Buena Notte from her window. The mysterious giant didn't like this at all. The next morning was no better. It seemed as though everyone was at the church for Holy Mass, but there was no market. No one even smiled, let alone waved at the mysterious giant. No children played. Everyone rushed around, piling their belongings in carts and wagons. Everyone was getting ready to run from Barletta. Everyone except Zia Conchetta 
and the mysterious giant. Colosso, she said to the huge statue, as long as I can remember, you have stood here, looking over this town and its people. Barletta loves you, and I know you love Barletta. I wish you could do something to save us from this army. With your size, I'm sure you could frighten them away. Why don't you hop down from your pedestal? And that's just what the mysterious giant did. Now, said Zia Conchetta, they put their heads together and came up with an idea. And a good one, too, said Zia Conchetta. The mysterious giant climbed back and stood still. People of Barletta, Zia Conchetta called, come quickly, great news. Un miraculo, a miracle, our giant is going to save us, come. The people of Barletta gathered around. Friends, Zia Conchetta said, our giant will go to meet this army himself. All you have to do is three things. First, bring me the biggest onion you can find. Second, stay completely out of sight. Hide under the bed, hide in the closet, hide in the cellar, hide in the attic, but stay out of sight. And third, don't ask any questions. Have faith in our mysterious giant. Someone quickly brought an onion. Now hide, shouted Zia Conchetta, and everyone scurried off. Well, Colosso, said Zia Conchetta as she sliced the onion in half. Buena fortuna. The mysterious giant took an onion half in each hand, once more stepped off the pedestal, and strode off to meet the army. Three miles outside the city, the mysterious giant sat down by the side of the road and held the onion pieces close to his eyes. Big tears began to run down his cheeks. The giant made loud sobbing noises. What a sight the army saw as it came over the hill. Halt, shouted the captain. The army halted. What is that? The captain whispered to one of his lieutenants. It looks like a giant boy crying, answered the lieutenant. Well, we'll see about this, said the captain, marching off to where the mysterious giant sat. I am Captain Minkian, the captain declared. We have come to destroy this town. Who are you and what are you doing here crying? No tricks now. Answer me. Oh, sir, said the giant, sobbing. I'm sitting out here away from the town because the other boys in school won't let me play with them. They say I'm too small. They pick on me all the time. They call me names like Minusculo and Debole, Tiny and Weakling. I'm always the last one chosen for games. Today they told me that if I tried to go to school, they would beat me up. I hate being so small. The giant sniffled loudly and blew the hats off the soldiers standing in front. The captain in the army stood dumbstruck. If this giant was a small boy that the others teased, then imagine what the rest of the people of this town were like. But someday, sir, the giant bellowed, someday I'll show them. I'm going to eat up all my pasta and I'll grow big and strong and then I'll be able to fight back. The soldiers began to back away, trembling. The lieutenants gathered around the captain, who had backed away from the giant, too. There was only one thing to do. Captain Minkian and his lieutenants drew their swords. They held them in the air and shouted, About face! Double time! March! The army turned and fairly ran in the opposite direction of Barletta. The mysterious giant threw away the onion halves, dried his tears, and went back to the church of San Sepulcro. They're gone, shouted Zia Conchetta to the townspeople as the giant climbed back on his pedestal once more. The army is gone. You can come out now. The town has been saved. Our giant did it. Que bella festa. What a celebration was held that night. But when it was over and the moon was high in the sky, the mysterious giant looked out over the sleeping town. Doves cooed themselves to sleep on his head and his shoulders. Everything was calm. Everything was still. Zia Conchetta opened her window. Buena notte, Colosso, she called, and grazie. And grazie means thank you.
And while I'm sure we wish that there was a mysterious giant who could save the people of Italy right now during this time, we know that one day there will be a time when the people of Italy can come to celebrate in the streets once again. Thank you for listening. Stay safe, stay healthy.